Hi, I'm Noah, and I am exceptionally humble. So humble, in fact, that I've decided that I'm going to create a model of my own face for my entrance hall, and to release to the world to show them just how incredibly, perfectly humble I am. Look, Ma, I too can do jump cuts, just like the kids on TikTok. So obviously, today we're going to be doing some 3D scanning. Now you might be saying to yourself, how in the hell are you going to do that? You have the budget of a raccoon in a dumpster in a back alley. And yeah, but we are still going to be doing it. And we're going to be using this five-year-old gimmicky toy, the Xbox Connect. Now in addition to letting you play that sweet, wonderful game, Just Dance 2016, this thing also acts as a 3D camera. It's got an HD webcam in it and a whole bunch of like sensors and stuff here that allows it to take a three-dimensional image, which is really cool. So it's kind of like photogrammetry, except in addition to having an HD webcam, it also has depth sensors all over it. So it can actually take a picture using depths and distances as the pixels, which is really cool. So anyways, a whole bunch of people realized that and started making 3D scan apps for Windows and then Microsoft coughed on did the same thing. The only problem is this connector. Nope, that one's fine. The only problem is this connector. This device was obviously built for the Xbox and it has a non-standard connector here that delivers USB input as well as 12 volt power, which most USB doesn't deliver. So before we do any 3D scanning, we've got to do some surgery. So I'm going to start by removing all these torque screws and taking the casing off the connect. Here you can see all the fancy sensors and stuff that really make this thing tick. It's a pretty cool piece of kit. At the top here, now we can see that the USB connections are exposed. Perfect. We can also see that the USB input is just a standard USB Type-B. And that's really awesome because that means we can just plug a regular old USB in there, we just have to worry about power. Now, luckily these pins are labeled. So for power, I'm going to take my 12 volt power supply, chop the barrel plug off, and I'm going to solder the ground wire to the ground pin obviously, and I'm going to solder the positive 12 volt wire to pin 10. And let's just put it all back together and Bob's your uncle. Wendy's your aunt. And here we go. Uh, wait, what was I f***ing doing? Oh. <laughs> what was I talking about? Now, since we've just messed with the USB connections of this thing and added 12 volt power to it, by my soldering skills, there's a very real chance that something's gotten screwed up and it's going to end up sending 12 volts the wrong way, which we really do not want. So first things first, I'm going to plug it into my old phone and my old laptop. And none of those exploded. There was no smoke, no popping, no sparks, no nothing. So hopefully, hopefully it works. Um, and the next thing is just to plug it into a computer that works well. <sighs> yeah, so I'm going to plug it into my laptop and let's see. So I plugged it into my laptop and I ran the 3D scan app and it didn't blow up. So that's a good thing. Now next thing I had to do was just set up a 3D scanning area. Now I'm sure Microsoft would be very jealous of the incredible ergonomics and design of the spinny chair with me sitting on it. Uh, but it actually works really well as a 3D scanning solution because I can stay relatively still while moving around. And I got Lisa to hold the Kinect and take all those HD three-dimensional photos of my beautiful face. Again, I am extraordinarily humble. Now all that's up to do is just hit process in the 3D scan app and it outputs this, which I can't see now, but if I edit the video right, you can see it. It is a colored three-dimensional model, which is great for many things, but I cannot display it on my mantelpiece. So I'm just going to export it as an STL, throw it into Cura, and put it on the printer. We get this, which is pretty good. Like, not a bad resemblance there. Like, it's, you know, it's, it's a little off at some parts, but it's pretty nice. A couple things of note, my nose is very triangular here. I think that's just because the Kinect was aiming down from the top and it just saw a shadow of my nose. Uh, my hair is very triangular. I'm being told it looks like that in real life. I don't quite believe that, but okay. And for some reason, it's got a little bit of black on the chin. Now I was printing black before I printed this, but I'm not sure why it's on the chin and not below. Maybe some got stuck in the print head. For comparison, I also have this model, which is five years old and was made back in about 2016 on a much more expensive printer. However, still using an Xbox Connect for the scanning. 
This might be a $400,000 printer, which uses UV light and other fancy things to produce it, but the print quality, honestly, is not that far off. Yeah, you can't see layer lines and stuff, but I would say that the Ender 3 pretty much maxes out the capability of the Xbox One Connect, which is really awesome because I would hate to have a bottleneck somewhere in there. This was a pretty fun experiment, and I really enjoyed it. If you've got an old Kinect lying around that you just don't know what to do with, Honestly, I would recommend doing this. It also works well as a zoom webcam, or it can be a virtual green screen, whatever. It can do all sorts of cool features, and it's a pretty neat thing to have around. Anyways, I've got another project lined up for this one that is going to be absolutely the most cursed thing you've ever seen. So if you want to see that one in future, maybe subscribe or something. I don't know. Set up an RSS feed via Carrier Pigeon if you really feel like it. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.